Handsome Earl Sears shocked the country when she was elected Virginia's lieutenant governor in 2021. She is the first black woman, naturalized female citizen and female veteran to hold the office. History made, and she's joining us now to talk about her new book, How Sweet It Is, which details how she made it to that historic moment a few years ago. We want to welcome you to GMA3. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I just can't believe I'm here because, you know, I grew up in the Bronx. You did. And, uh, yeah, and watching Good Morning America, and now here I am. Well, God let's talk good. about this because no matter your politics, I don't think anyone can argue that your story is inspiring. So many firsts. Why was now the time to tell your story? Well, I, I, you, you have your own story. Everybody does. And you never think that it's, you know, who wants to read it? You know, I, you've lived it and you don't think it's so special. But everywhere I went, you know, I did prison ministry. I, I led a men's prison ministry for two years and I was a former homeless shelter director. And my dad only came with $1.75 from Jamaica at the height of the civil rights movement. And people have heard that and they said, uh, you should write a book. And so I, you know, I kept being pestered about it. So I did. And I hope it inspires people to know that no matter how much uh, bad things are, you can rise from the ashes. You talk a lot in your book about your faith and your yeah. relationship with God. Yes. How do you keep the faith when things aren't necessarily going so well? You know, it's like Abraham Lincoln when he was trying to keep the country together. And what he said was, many times I was driven to my knees because I had no place else to go. And so if he can go to God to try to keep a country together, then surely I can go to God to keep my life together. So that's the thread that I think people will see throughout the book. You won your current position in 2021. What is it about your story that you think really stood out to constituents? Well, I think, you know, I was elected. My first election was in the year 2000, 2001, actually. And then I left politics for 20 years. I was gone. And I think what I learned then was you, when you're in politics, you sort of get a sort of a deferential type of treatment. You know, people open doors for you. And, and, and so you sort of forget that, no, no, you're not above people. You're just like the rest of us. And then I passed laws and I got to see how it was to live under those laws. And, and now being back uh, after 20 years, so Moses came back after 40. I came back after 40. <laughs> <laughs> so just call me little Mo. But, but I've experienced a lot in my life. And I think education is what, you know, pulled my father out of poverty when he only came with $1.75. And I, I, I have a story to tell. And I thought, I'm looking and I'm seeing that the kids aren't learning and somebody's got to do something. And suddenly you realize you're that somebody. Let's talk about politics a little bit because it's a big political year coming up. What are you hoping to see from the 2024 presidential candidates? Well, what I hope to see from all of them is the schoolyard insults, they have to stop. Uh, they're all leaders in their own right. And it's like when I'm president, uh, when I'm presiding over the Virginia Senate, there are 40 senators and I'm asked, how does it, how is it to, to is it like hurting cats? And I said, no, um, it's leaders. They're all 40 of them leaders and they represent people and everyone has to be heard. Even if I don't like their politics, I have to be unbiased. Uh, and so that's what I would hope to see from the 2024 candidates. Okay, so you've held a lot of roles. Did I read you're an elect you've been an electrician? Yes. Even? Wow, it's amazing. You've done that. You mentioned prison ministry. Yeah. Well, what's been the hardest role you've had and your favorite? Well, my favorite, the very best job I ever had was when I was a homeless shelter director for women and children because they're at bottom and I get a chance to put hope and inspiration into these lives and to move them up. And, and that to me was just the best. And the worst, uh, I, I can't really think of the worst because you learn from it, all of them, you know? You really, what? You're laughing. No, no, right? There's so much truth in it's that. It's so true. Yeah, yeah, you learn from it all. Yeah. So, and I think it all builds you up anyway. You know, you are who you are because of the things that you've experienced. It's not this one goal. You know, people, when, when we're in high school, we want to be this thing and we think we'll have made it. Well, we now know that's not how it works. Everything in life builds you to where you are. And then you just keep going.
It's the journey, right? It's the journey, right. Thank Life you. is a journey. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for Lieutenant having Lieutenant Governor. Me. It's been Thank you. such a pleasure. You can get a copy of How Sweet It Is, Defending the American Dream. It is sold everywhere books are sold. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.